Um, are we ready to get this shit show on the road? Fuck, let's start this shit show. All right, here we go. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 152 for Thursday, the 7th of December, 2017. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I decided to ditch the friend, put in another friend and say, fuck it, we're going to go anyway. How you doing, Sean? <laughs> I'm doing great. What about you, man? Man, um, I got I got a pimple on my nose, dude. Really? Yeah, not like, not like you know, one of those adult pimples where it's like, oh, okay, I'm, you know, that, that that's my, might be an ingrown hair. No, it's like on the tip of my nose, this big old gnarly pimple. That oh man, like it hurt. Like when I that's how I found it because I went to like scratch my nose, like oh ow, what the oh shit. <laughs> um, and they always like they always explode out of nowhere. It's like five minutes earlier, your face is perfectly clean, right? Right, nothing there, and then poof, big red spot. Yeah, yeah, like 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 a little miniature alien tried to pop out of my nose and got stuck, you know, like you son of a anyway. Uh, so I tried to handle that a while ago and that didn't really work out too well. So now I got this pink dot right in the middle of the nose for our video uh viewers. Um, how you been, dude? Uh, like you're not on fire right now, so that's probably good. <laughs> yeah, I do. I have no idea, man. It's been, dude, I don't even need to smoke another cigarette in my life because I've inhaled enough smoke this week. Mm. Um, so last week I talked about my super, super secret project with, uh, Jenny and Richard and that recording, it was actually delayed because of the fires in Southern California. Jenny was not feeling well because of it. So yeah, no reveal on that this week. But, um, Darn. but, uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be coming. And, uh, I, I gotta tell you, dude, um, since my surgery on my back, things have been going, going bad. Like I, I've got, uh, holy shit. Hey, things, things really thought, um, things have just been going wrong with between the, the headaches and <laughs> like positional headaches, which I, the, holy shit, that's, that is the worst long-term thing ever. Cause a kidney stone was the worst pain I've ever felt. Like I literally thought I was dying. Um, and it was a tiny one. Like I couldn't imagine having like a big one, like, like, uh, some people I know are going for, um, and being thanks very much for the, for the little token things. What are, what are those called? Cheer? Yeah. The cheers. Yeah. Those are cheers, dude. Yeah. That's how you make money, man. Uh, look, this they're, is they're giving you money. This is the, I don't like, I'm, I'm just happy people are here watching and enjoying the content and adding a little something on their own. That's, that's what I'm here for. But um, ain't nobody ain't nobody enjoying this. They're just watching to see how bad we fuck up. Look, even that though, even that, like, <laughs> come on, that's better than nothing. So, uh, it, 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 every train wreck deserves to be watched. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> 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 um, the uh, what was I saying? Oh, uh, the pain. Uh, the, the positional headaches, man. That was just a pain. It was literally a pain in my head. Anytime it wasn't laying flat on the ground, that finally went away. But then I'd wake up every day with a headache, and I had to fight it all the time. Last Friday, went to the doctor for my normal checkup. She changed my medications. Headaches are all but gone. Well, today with you, today being the exception because today I've just got a little whatever headache. I don't know why. Um, right. but, uh, for the most part, the headaches are gone. I feel normal. I'm starting to get shit done around the house. I made dinner tonight. I got some stuff done. I hung out with my daughter this morning and it's just a completely different world when, when like just the slightest things can just set you off and headaches are one of those things that I, like you can't deal with, you can't life when you've got no. a headache like that, you know? No, yeah, yeah, I fully remember when I went through like um, all those spinal taps as a kid, like for like almost six months. It's like all out of the blue. I'm sitting in algebra class and whap pow, and it feels like someone just took a frying pan to the to your back and to your head, and it's like, oh, uh, you can't see. You're like half blind. Yeah, yeah, no, I <laughs> I am not envy of you, dude. I give you all the sympathy in the world, but uh, you it sucks. Yeah. Um, so I went into the doctor last Friday and we talked about the headaches a little bit and she was like, okay, so we, are you having any other pain? And I was like, yeah, if I move too quickly, I get, you know, depending on the movement, like if I twist too quick or whatever, I can actually twist now, which is good. But if I twist too yeah. quick or if I try to like come up the stairs, like at a normal pace, instead of like, taking my time up the stairs, I'll get a pain that kind of, it, depending on where it is, it goes in my back. She's like, well, wh what kind of, and I was like, okay, well, if I twist, it's usually like, it feels, I can feel it in my abs all the way around to my back. It's kind of just feels tight. Like, you know, uh, when you're stretching a muscle that doesn't want to be stretched, that kind of thing. Um, and if I stand up too quick, I'll get a headache or I'll get a get a pain from the back of my head down to my anus. And she she looked at me like, that ain't normal. And I was like, I know. That's why I'm telling you about it. Um, luckily, all that's gone away too now that I've changed my medications. 
Is it one of those situations where it hurts when I do this? Well, don't do that. Uh, no, it was more of a because I, I was on the I was on the good drugs, the heavy stuff, and right. Um, it was a matter of the heavy drugs were kind of playing with my blood pressure, I think, a little bit. So, and I've already got high blood pressure as it as it is because I'm super stressed and like if you couldn't tell by the video, uh, the bald spot in the back of my head. Um, but it, it just, just changing my medications changed how I deal with everything. And it's just so much better that way. <laughs> um, you, uh, so, so let me ask you this dude, cause we, we recently talked to someone else that was in Southern California during the fires. Um, yeah. how far away from the fires are you? Um, well, uh... The one over by the five and the one twenty six, I think they were calling. I forget which fire they were calling that one. That was uh, about three miles from my house. Oh, geez. Uh, on my direct route home, the Santa Paula fire, which basically is going from Ventura all the way over to Fillmore, which is about halfway between me and my work, and I actually have to drive by that every day. Mm. Uh, and that one's still growing. It actually reached as far up as Ojai, Ojai yeah, and that. the farmland and like the 33 shut down parts of the 126 is shut down. Mm -hmm. Parts of the 101 have been going, shutting down and open up, show, up, shut down and open up. We got guys at work cause, uh, I work over in a uh, thousand Oaks and actually, and Newberry park lit up like yesterday or yeah, the day before. Tuesday, I think it was. So I was at, I had four fires around me. I just left work and said, I'm gone. And then, um, what was it? Last night, 405 lit up and, you know, Bel Air's burning. I just, yeah, I, saw I that just, too. I just immediately just cranked on some bad religion and just listened to Los Angeles is burning because, man, we're up in flames. Uh, it just amazes me because th th these damn fires. I remember when I was when I was young, um, you know, first several years of primary school, right? Uh, maybe until yeah. till about fifth or eighth grade, even. Um, being in California wasn't like there there were there were occasional fires. Sometimes you get a mudslide, especially after that area had burned or whatever. But it wasn't like yeah. a major thing. And now, since probably sophomore year, so we're talking about ninety ninety one something like that, maybe ninety two. Yeah. Um, it just seems like California, Southern California is on fire 24 seven. It almost seems like that, but yeah, it, it just like we, whenever the Santa Ana's kick up mm -hmm. and they're starting to kick up more and more every year, like instead of like it used to be maybe once or twice a year, you'd see some Santa Ana's go. Mm -hmm. Now it's like the Santa Ana's are like every two months. That's and you, and God, we had 70 mile per hour winds, uh, gust winds. Yeah. On Tuesday, uh, and, and yesterday was for for those that don't know what the Santa Anas are. Um, it, it's <clears throat> uh, so, it's a hurricane without the rain. But but the, it's <laughs> it's this it's yeah it's this this the particular weather pattern where the the um this hot air comes in down from like the Baja California area and kind of blows up the coast. But as it goes, it's going more north than the coast of California is. So it's actually coming inland as it goes up. And it basically sweeps through the L.A. Valley and then the, all, the, all the valleys around L.A. And just continues going north, almost northeast, until it just hits the, the Sierra Nevadas and dissipates into nothing. Because they, they don't care about it at all. They're like, oh, we're not going to get as much snow this month. Fuck you. Um, but, uh, yeah, my sister-in-law were just watching a show the other day. And it referenced Ohio and and. I was like, yeah, I've been there once or twice. And she was like, oh, really? It's like the real town. I was like, yeah, you got to watch yeah. it though. Cause that place burns like every two years. And then the next day I'm, uh, I'm on Twitter and it's like, oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> on fire. Like, oh, weird. Okay. <laughs> um, just one more, one more reason. I'm glad I don't live there. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. You know, you can live up there with your, with your mooses and your, your ice roads and your, yeah. I got to tell you, man, like my, it's, it's it's pretty fun up here. Um, Have we, you gone to that lake where if you throw a rock, it like echoes everywhere like so much? It's like the craziest like like remember those lightsaber cardboards mm. where we had that spring in and go. Yeah, no, no. We our lakes. Uh, so our lakes were frozen over last week, and people were just getting out there, just starting to do some ice skating, 
no one had really gone out there with the uh, with the snow machines and um, you know started racing on them or anything else. So that's what they'll do in the wintertime. They'll take actually take their snow machines out and race on the ice. Um, so they hadn't started doing that yet, but they had got, started going out there and doing a little bit of ice skating and this and that. Well, we were hit, we hit a, a heat wave, and it's been man, it's been probably an average like thirty five degrees for like the last right. four or five days. So it'll it'll dip into freezing, but then come right back up. And all the ice on the lakes has melted again. So now you basically have these huge icebergs, <laughs> like flat flat icebergs in the middle of the lake, but there's no, on the on the surrounding edges, it's all, it's it's just funny, man. It's, it's crazy. This winter is nothing like last winter, because this time last winter, we were maxing out at like five degrees, and we had two feet of snow on the ground. So. Yeah. Do you ever, like, go play Kubert? Oh, just with, hop up berg to berg to berg to berg. <laughs> not so much. No. Oh, God. I, be funny to watch. I, 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 I'm not comfortable enough to just walk out into the middle of a lake on ice. Like that's just not something I'm comfortable doing yet. And maybe never, probably never. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> it just, it doesn't seem, <laughs> I, I, I've seen too many YouTube videos where some jackass is out there. <laughs> Look how thick it is. I'm dumb jumping up and down crack. Oh, that guy's gone forever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no that's because they don't do they, they're not smart about it you see i i would trust you to be a little bit smart and to go yeah I, I know that might crack there so let me try to crack it i well, am not smart gonna crack. all right let's play i'm very smart that's why i don't go out there at all like that's <laughs> i made the smartest decision possible not go not the, screw that shit that's not happening uh-uh um you know what i did earlier today What'd you do earlier? I published last week's RMP. Really? Yeah. Is that why my feed? Is that why I've like been missing the RMP in my feed? Uh, well, so here's the thing: we we took Thanksgiving off, right? And right. then we recorded last week, and it was such a long time I couldn't get it out that night. And we had I had an appointment the next morning. Friday night came along. We watched a movie as a family. Saturday, Sunday, all kinds of random shit was going on. And then Monday, I, I, look, look, I just didn't get it done. All right. Had a little bit of burnout and it took me a while. I got that shit done today. I'm so glad to have it done. It's such a great episode. No, like I feel like I feel bad because of rod people that couldn't watch it live or catch it on Twitch of, right. of the, the, the fun and the heavy of that episode that we had. And I got to tell you, I I really feel good that I finally got it out because it's been a bit of a bugaboo. Like every time I come down here to to do it, I need about two hours, a solid block of two hours to work on something like that. And I haven't had that until today. And today, as soon as uh, Autumn went off to school, I came in here and started cranking away. And I had a few problems, thought well, thought I wasn't going to do it. And I had to leave to go get my niece from daycare. So I, I literally published everything, got in the truck and drove out there and picked her up, came back here and cooked dinner. And had just finished eating when you when you popped online. So th- there, there's my day. That's what I did today. And that's about all I got for you. Because holy shit, it's about time. And that- it's, the funny part is. Hmm. I lost sound. <laughs> Great. You- you lost, well, I thought I lost you because you're like, the funny part is, and then it just <laughs> died. See, this is why Skype sucks. <laughs> I was going to say the funny part is that, that show last week, you, you started late as hell, just like this week we started late as hell. Yeah. And then you publish it late as hell. Yeah. And this is the one, this is the one time where you don't have anything else to do during the day, but relax and sit around. <laughs> right. But that's the last thing I've been able to do is relax and just <laughs> sit around. <laughs> like I'm, I'm not saying I'm happy about it. I'm just saying it, it is what it is. So. Oh, no, I got you. I got you. I feel you. Um, but and, I just find it incredibly hilarious. Oh, no, no, it's, it, there's definitely a pattern there. Um, the This last week has been, there's been a lot of trailers that come out this this last week. Oh, dude, it's been insane. You got you got a taste of, you got the taste of uh, Deadpool that came out like within the last couple of weeks. And then uh, he just down, he just dropped a, like a little, uh, Brazil Comic Con teaser, all in Portuguese, and he actually read it all in Portuguese. Damn near perfect Portuguese mm. about getting about getting Deadpool tattoos. It was just absolutely great. Um, Star Wars has been dropping some major. I I've like been half the movie has been released. It. Yeah, half the movie has been released at this point. 
no, that's the thing. They haven't really touched anything. And I'm just like, thank God. And then, and then they dropped the, the, the Holy grail of Avengers. Mm. And I just, I told so many people, if you haven't seen Thor Ragnarok, be careful. Cause I know they're going to insert a clip from Ragnarok in there. Right. And I called it. And as soon as I saw it, I saw that eye patch and I was like, that's it. You guys should have watched that because now people are like, what the hell? Why is his eye covered? And they're like, yeah, you have to see it. Uh, luckily, I've stayed so far away from the MCU that I don't even watch the trailers anymore. You know what, though? It's it's just that perfect time to now, especially with today's, uh, annou- or not today's announcement, but this week's kind of leak of uh, 20th Century Fox and Disney, possibly Disney might buy out 20th. Um, uh, it's either going to be really, really awesome, like it did with Marvel and like it did with Lucas Art, or it's going to go horribly, horribly wrong. Mm. And you know, your kids could buy anything that was great. Well, my my apprehension is that Disney is getting too big for the shorts. It's it's suing Redbox right now for for reselling codes. Um, right. They already control like half of the decent movies that come out of Hollywood in the first place. And th- the last thing they need is to get even more um, more properties behind them. Because w- once they get Fox, of course, they get the Fantastic Four back. Right. Uh, they get they get the, the, the distribution rights to, to episodes one through six. Right. And I think... There's something about seven. They get maybe maybe they get distribution for seven now, or I don't I don't know. But um, they, no. What it is is uh, they already have distribution for almost all of them, except for four. Four they still have to pay a royalty on. You're talking about Disney, right? 20, yeah. Uh no. Uh yeah. Disney owns almost all the royalties and all of the distribution, except for episode four or a New Hope. New Hope is the only thing that uh, Fox held on to with a tight grip, and they can't do anything with that. They can't change any of the, like, they can't do a re-release without uh, Fox's okay. Right. So that's why it was a big deal with all of the digital, like, releases and everything. So now that if they buy Fox, they will get that. And the word is, and I got some strong words from a couple of people I know over at Disney. Word is, is everybody's pushing for a re-release of the original theatrical uh, uh, trilogy. Uh, Yeah, and now that Lucas... There is is a slight chance of it. Uh, They said there's a huge, huge push. Everybody's gunning for it. Lucas is still standing, you know, trying to do his... I don't want you to do this, but Lucas gave away all the ability to have any of that say so. I really wouldn't. So here's my thing about as far as the original trilogy goes, I'm okay with the new ones. I'm completely okay with the new ones, except for the changes they made. Like, don't give me the extra scene bullshit with, with Han and, and, uh, 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 what's his nuts. No. Um, don't switch the firing order. And, right. but if you want to add, you know, add all this, all, add all the things in the background, all the additional stuff they added to it, I'm good with just stop changing the fucking story. And, and that's the thing because Lucas has never been happy. If he would have had the same ability with a THX 1138, he would have so done that. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been known to, I mean, I think he was cutting American graffiti up until a uh, release date when they actually had to go to printing. Right. And, they, and the studio said, no, you need to stop. And I think it was uh, Francis Ford Coppola that actually stepped in and kind of pulled him away. And that's just because he's just, he's never satisfied with his work. And we saw what happens when you have free reign to constantly edit. There is such a thing as too much time. Yeah to make changes. Sometimes you just got to step away. You got to, you got to just let your baby grow up and be your, be what it's going to be and quit meddling with it. Well, I mean, cause they, they they took the original reels, right. When they, when they did the enhancements, they took the original reels, digitized them and they went frame by frame and added this and that and everything else. And again, with all the background stuff, the extra detail, the the cleaner images, I'm good with all that. I just don't like the fact that they, they changed the Han shit. 
and they changed the other, they added the other Han scene. But oh well, I don't oppose that Han that that the Millennium Falcon and Jabba Hutt being right there in the same room because it really does explain why the hell is he on Tatooine on a planet that's ruled by the Huts when he's wanted by the Huts. See, here's the thing that then, he's a smuggler. I don't need an explanation for any reason, or I I don't need him to have a specific reason to be anywhere. He's a smuggler. That's he, that gives him all the reason to be anywhere in the universe he needs. That extra scene. It, there's no way you're going to make that look good. It's never going to, like, you can oh, put all, oh, the, no. all the magic in the world. And especially with him doing the little stepping on his tail thing, it just, it's, it, it, it takes Jabba yeah, out no. of character. It takes Han out of character. It, it's just a shit scene that just needs to go away. Of all the scenes you could have added, that, that was not the one, you know? I, so. I, I do agree. It wasn't the greatest scenes. I'm just saying there is a reason. Yeah. And I can understand that reason. The same reason why you made, why, Anakin became a bratty little snot machine. <laughs> I mean, come on. How is an over, evil overlord going to act as a teenager? Um, the best things about the prequel, prequels is Natalie Portman. Uh, I'm going to stand by I that until the day I die. Um, <laughs> but if you want to add something, you can add something to us over at patreon.com slash ritual misery. <laughs> uh, if you give a fuck about the show, give a buck to the show and make it all worthwhile. Um, it, it's been it's been awesome. I don't know what it is about Patreon. I don't. I, I really need to get in there because things have been doing like we're, we're we actually like I have to we made we made enough on Patreon this year. I have to claim it on my taxes, and that fucking blows me away. That is Whoa. so amazing. Um, I know you're supposed to claim everything, but whatever. Until you hit a certain threshold, nobody gives a shit. We hit that threshold last month, Holy and God. like. Fucking unreal. I, I so appreciate everyone that's put into it. The what you put into it is what's gonna enable me to be able to go to South by and do meetups. And it's gonna I mean, because me and Kent, we already have all the all the, the equipment we need. We've already got everything else. At this point, it's just helping us make the show better and bring the show to you live like we did last year, or I guess this year at South by. And uh, you know, it is it's it's gonna make things it, it adds to the show because we can give more back and we're not doing it out of our own pocket. We're doing it with a, a collective pool that we can, we can use to, to add to the show and, and add to events and things like that. And it's just amazing. So very, very appreciative of that. And if you'd like to kick in on that, it's uh patreon.com slash ritual misery. And that goes to, a, 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 that just goes to making everything better. Um, keeping us from having to go out of pocket for fun shit, like giving away t-shirts and things like that, that we're, finally able to start doing congrats man congrats that is awesome yeah it's really really cool and uh all anyone who's interested in how how the patreon thing actually works and how it goes through and and wants to bump numbers or anything else feel free to give me give me a tweet at ethan kane um or email me or whatever else and i'll go i mean we, we we've started from the beginning we kept all of our numbers public how many people are watching the show, how many downloads we're getting. All that stuff is public. We don't, we're not hiding anything because we don't believe in that. We think that's really stupid. Um, and if you would like to talk about things like that, by all means, let me know. It's, it's amazing. Um, the, the, the feedback that we get and things like that is, is really, really cool. Awesome. Um, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, uh, companies battling out and buying each other and working things out and everything else. Um, but you put in here in the show notes, Amazon and Google starring in the, the latest, uh, the latest movie, um, battle of the internet giants. Dude, have you, have you been reading what's been going on behind the scenes and now in front of the scenes with everybody? I've read some of it, but, uh, why don't you bring our listeners up to speed on, uh, on how things have been going? All right. Google says Google has kind of always kind of been hesitant with Amazon, especially as soon as Amazon came out with Amazon video or Amazon prime video. And in which case uh, they've never really included on any of their Google uh, setups, such as Google TV or uh, Google Chrome didn't really have access to it. You didn't, you couldn't stream as well. Well, in doing so, Amazon finally has answered Google's callback and they're killing off everything Google off of their platform. Um, so, and so no more YouTube on Amazon fire, no more YouTube on Amazon, um, tablets, uh, no more, you don't have access to any of the Google suites, 
on Amazon products anymore. And it actually took it to a big jump today where Amazon's like, yeah, you're going to like this, Google? Watch. Hey, Apple, guess what? We're going to fucks with you now. Mm. And they go, well, here's the drop you've been waiting for. Amazon uh, Prime is now on at Apple TV. There you go. Eat that one, Google. And Google is pissed. Mm. Um. So th- this is one of the things, because I'm such an Apple advocate, I'm used to living in a walled garden where I can't necessarily control what comes in and g- goes out the gate. Um, if Amazon and Google want to start having it out and cutting each other off from each other's stuff, I'm, I'm good with it. I am completely good with it. Don't care because I own Google stuff in the house. I own Apple stuff. I own Amazon stuff. I'm never going to have everything everywhere except the fact that I have multiple devices. So I'm just, I'm already used to it. Like if they want to, you know, if I can't, if I can't Google for my Alexa, then whatever, I guess I'll just use Siri. Like (laughs) everything's so (laughs) ambiguous now. Like it's all, it's, everything's available. You just have to be able, you know, go the shortest route for you. And some people that's one thing and other people it's a different. Exactly. And it's all starting to really pop off with some of the, um, like I just got the Samsung S eight plus and I was commenting to Sally. It's like, dude, this is exactly like the iPhones. The only difference is we got a SIM disc or a uh, SD disc we could put in now. Yay. Other than that, it's still like exactly the same. I try to use Bixby and it's like, yeah, I kind of like Siri a little bit better than Bixby. Mm. And that's, you know how bad I hate all things Apple. Right. For me to pop off with something like that, that's like a huge nod. Now that Apple's starting to catch up and they're things are in this weird mishmash of becoming awesome and then splitting off because people because companies are having shit fits. <laughs> We got Disney and 20th Century Fox going to become one. Possibly, Samsung is in every single Apple product now. You got Amazon saying, "No, screw you, everybody. We're going to make all of our own stuff." And failing. Mm. The only thing that's been working with is their Amazon app and Twitch. Everything else, that their Amazon Prime TV hasn't been doing so great. Uh, Hulu's been like sweeping all of the awards. Netflix losing Disney. Netflix goes, okay, watch this. And they just start pounding, pounding shows. It's just, everything is such a flux and it's great. Again, we've been, uh, are you a cord cutter? Like, do you still have cable or? No, I haven't. I don't have cable. I haven't had cable in what six years. Yeah. See, I haven't watched cable in six years. <laughs> um, but you know, especially when, when we moved into this house up here, we made the conscious decision not to get cable at all in our house. We have a leaf antenna for like big football games. And that's really the only thing we use it for. Um, particularly the Super Bowl, actually. And uh, we originally got it for a trailer. So when we're out, you know, out somewhere, we can put some TV on. You know, PBS is right. broadcast pretty much everywhere. So the kids have something to watch, whatever, when they get tired of watching the DVDs. Um, the, uh, this all just reminds me of the, of the cord, cord cutting revolution. Um, yeah. Where you have all these different services and all of them are, are walling off their own little portions of what they want to do and how they want to do it, what they want to charge. And eventually it, it all comes out and we're going to end up, in a world of ambiguity, like everyone's just going to have all the things eventually. It might cost you more yeah. if you're going this route or, you know, whatever, but eventually it's going to be there. You know, it, I worry and, much less about who's using what services on what devices than I do about net neutrality. So, and apparently yeah, nobody gives a shit about net neutrality. Yeah, no, really. Cause uh, that's the most scary thing in the world. Everybody, Cause you know, at some point it's going to be, okay, you want to go to Disney's new streaming site. You're going to have to pay five ninety nine. Oh, you want to use Disney and Netflix. Well, we'll bundle those together for yeah. seventeen ninety five. Oh, and by the way, Hulu. Yeah. We're not going to give you access to that. Cause that's just not a part of our system. Cause I was going to ask you, you know, up there, what are you using? Cause if you're trying to get away from cable and cables in America, the only happy internet service anymore, cause DSL is just so crammed and so 
bottlenecked. How do you get a, how do you get away if you don't have cable? Uh, well, so we have cable internet, but we don't have we don't have a TV program on it. Um, although in my neighborhood, the DSL apparently is faster, as I'm learning from the Facebook groups in the area. Um, yeah. But I'm 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 reluctant to switch just because I finally have unlimited internet through my cable provider, and they even for they're, how long? Oh well, yeah, and but that's that's the rule either way though, because um, the we we were throttled. Well, th- I don't say throttled. We were throttle a bull after one terabyte for yeah. the first year that we were up here. And they just recently switched that to unlimited and I've tested it. <laughs> it's unlimited. <laughs> um, we just got, we just got hit with a massive overage fee. I think we got hit with a hundred dollar fee, uh, for going one gig over the, over the limit. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, I, I really think all that is really, really, really shitty. Um, and, and they're saying in the chat room that, you, you know, you, you have uh, problems that you only have one option in the area or there's only two. We have three options up here. Um, we have, oh, fuck, what's the name of our, uh, GCI is the cable company and MTA is the DSL company. And then we have satellite that you can get, which no, thank you. And, uh, yeah, it's like, those are the three options you have. You basically one per, per format and you just kind of got to go with it. But yeah, I'm interested, interested to see how all that works out. And the only I reason just, I'm convinced the only reason GCI went unlimited is because I texted him like every, or Twittered him every single month bitching about how we were, <laughs> we were running out of internet. Uh, yeah. So screw them people. And especially because if you get if you go to any single site in the world now, it's like inundates you with ads, and those ads are always like resource hogs. They suck up all your your processing speed, and they suck up all of your internet data. Mm. I mean, there's one month where I went on, I actually went through ten ten gigs of data service in two days just because I was frequently frequency uh, three sites. And they all had like heavy advertisements and mm. all of a sudden it's like constantly dropping new advertisements every time I went to a new page. And it's insane. I, uh, the, the thing about ads that pisses me off is when they, when they block me from using a website, that's the only time ads piss me off. I have an ad blocker that I use when I'm on air so that if I do go to like YouTube or whatever, that I don't get, you know, scuttle butted with all that shit. But other than that, I don't, I don't bother using it because again, it, it, it nothing really matters to me. But last time I formatted my computer, I did not add anything Flash or Java on it at all until oh, eventually I added Java because it had to for, for Twitch of all things. Um, yeah. But no Flash at all. And it was amazing because before I added Flash in Java, like, well, I still haven't added Flash, but until I added, added Java, like half the ads, with, with, without my ad blocker, half the ads weren't coming up. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Just like, get the little, little error box. <laughs> it's like, this is sweet. Um, but of course then there's switch. So I had to add Java. Yeah, I know that that's the fun psyche part. Yeah. Um, the, uh, but as far as, as, you know, getting back to Amazon and Google, they want to fight it out. They can fight it out. Jeff Bezos is the richest man alive or whatever, whatever, whatever. And what's his name from Google owns a private Island off of the, off of big Island of Hawaii or some shit. So whatever, like I'm not worried about it. They're, they're already in the super rich. They're already, they already own the Republican party and all the things that go along with that. And I'm not trying to get, uh, I'm not trying to get political tonight. Well, here's the thing that, and that actually the thing that worries me is that it really does affect us is because two of the best products that everybody uses is they use Google Chrome for the browsing ability and they use Twitch and those two monsters without, without each other, it's just not that great of an experience, at least not for me. And I'm just waiting for if this, are we going to start seeing all new browsers, all new app features? Are we going to see some huge innovation between the two? The comp I'm enjoying this because the competition can be a great, great thing like AMD and Intel AMD find use that that, Old school chip warp was fantastic. Prices were low. Chips were getting twice as fast, like at a monthly rate. 
And yeah, I mean, it costs you in the end because you're constantly trying to keep up with everything right. and you couldn't <laughs> keep up with everything. But by the end of it, when everything finally slowed down, oh my God, the advances in five years were fantastic. And can Google and a Amazon's uh, battle be that big where you could see some really fantastic things, some new streaming services? Can somebody take over YouTube now that YouTube is failing the way it is? Uh you say failing, but there's no one, no one is even close to competing with everything that YouTube has. Yeah. But you got a whole entire community that's begging to get away. Uh, no, I mean, no I'm, not, I'm, not saying, actually... I'm not saying they're not. I'm saying that like the financial capital that you would need and the, the backing that you would need to effectively take on YouTube is insane to comprehend because they yeah. started so early because they've been doing it for so long and, and they have, a practically immeasurable backlog of random shit. But remember, Amazon already set all that up well before YouTube even got to that point. They just did. They've been using it as like most of the Amazon servers that they use for shopping. Amazon doesn't even touch a eighth of those. It's all used up by Google, by uh, uh, I think Top Hatter uses a ton right now. eBay's using a ton. Um, it's just being sold out to whoever wants to use it. Imagine if they took some of that ability back, they could actually really do some damage in the streaming world. Yeah. But look at all the troubles that YouTube's had over rights management and everything else. I mean, that's, I don't even know that another company wants to take that on without going completely, uh, uh, procured like, you know, uh, 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 um, <laughs> exactly. Without going uh, completely curated, but to curate, it's literally, it would be like to physically curate everything that goes on to YouTube. It's not a possibility. No, so, and you, so if if and you're you gonna do, to. if you're can, if you're gonna compete with YouTube, you'd have to have a platform in which you can curate. But the manpower required to curate every video that you go to put up, uh, that's you know, that's just too much money to, to do that. And that's the only and real way that I see anybody competing with YouTube. And actually there's, and there is an actual fix for it and it started to get implemented, but people just didn't grasp onto it, which is the, which is the paid streaming service. It's sort of like if you're paying, it's like, remember cable TV, the whole big issue with the ability to put playboy or spice or any of those stations on a cable, on a cable network was a huge issue and people like threw were up in arms. How can the FE, FCC allow this? Well, they're paying for it. Mm. If they're paying for it, then they're obviously of the knowing mind of what they're getting. Right. Because it's extra. It's not, it's not, yeah. uh, uh, it's, well, it's certainly not something that they're getting over the air. <laughs> exactly. And because YouTube, it's such a free format and depends so highly on the advertisements, they can't just say, you know what, we're going to let the community run within whatever they create, they create. So because of that, they're doing, they're doing this ad apocalypse crap and trying to play, you know, police poorly. And which is why the community is so up in arms. If they would just, if they would just implement red a little better and say, here's your option community. Here's your option committee. You can either opt in to be red only. And if you're red only, you can do whatever the hell you please. Just do you. There is no form of censorship, which has its good parts and bad parts. Don't get me wrong, but I'm, I'm pro, I am, I'm very anti censorship whatsoever. I may not agree with everything everybody says. I may not like it. But once you give, once you start, that's a whole conversation for another time for mm. hours on end. But if you take that platform and said, okay, here you go, Casey Nassat, you can either go completely YouTube bread or you can stay partially in the adverse. But if you're going to have ads on, you have to follow this or we will kill you. And that's the end of the story. It's a, poof, done. Your, your time on Google is over. But they won't take that stance. Uh, I, I I still don't know that it's necessarily feasible. It, I, 
I am hesitant to, to believe that there's any way anybody can take on YouTube, including YouTube. It, it's just, it's too big. It's been around for uh, over a decade now. And there's, there's, it, it, I just, I'm not hopeful. I'm, I'm pessimistic. Uh, not hopeful. Um, if Kmart and Sears can fail, so can YouTube. <laughs> Together even. <laughs> yes. That's the best part. How, how the hell could those two businesses you, actually go down on fire like that? You got, you have one business that never, never had the customer service it needed to provide, uh, to charge enough to sustain itself. And the other one, they charged too much to get the customers in the door and they, they combined and, uh, and then it just, it didn't work out for either one. And, uh, yeah. it's beautiful, very beautiful. Yeah. Um, it's just like, it's a classic story. So, uh, you have on here that we always skip our little advert in the middle and you're right because usually I, I don't like shilling out like that. Like we already asked for people to hook, hook us up over at Patreon. Um, but if you, if you are looking for gear, gear stuff, if you're looking for geek gear, cruise on over to geek and gamer gear.com geek, the letter N gamer and, uh, uh, use the offer code ritual misery at checkout and you'll save 10% off your first order. And of course, a couple of pennies that get kicked back our way. Um, they got a lot of cool stuff on there. I recently, I just went over there like maybe three days ago and it was browsing around and the couple of things I was looking for, I couldn't find, which kind of pissed me off, but there's a lot of stuff on there that I'm not interested in. So cruise on over by there. And, uh, you know, if you, if you find something, ritual misery, at checkout and save 10%. <laughs> That's the way to sell it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I went there looking for three specific things and I didn't find what, any of the what three. Were you look, what were you looking for? Um, so I was looking for a, 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 a t-shirt that would, that I could wear to a holiday party, something really stupid and just kind of like in the holiday spirit and geeky. And there's a couple right. over there, but I just didn't like the ones that they have. Um, and I was looking for a retro controller and, um, they didn't have it. I was looking for a, uh, Something for the, well, the, 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 they did, they did have one, like, I think a month or two ago, they must've sold out already. Yeah. Well, I was looking for a, a joystick to, to use on the, um, on the SNES classic. And yeah. there's, there, there, I don't even know if one exists, but I didn't find one there. And I don't remember what the other, one, the other one was. I like, I like going there because like you can find like, it's, it's about to st the knickknacks. Mm. I love the fact that you can get knickknacks and little things you can put places, some for your keys, you know, and mm. I got a Superman pocket watch <laughs> that I still love to death. And I don't care what anybody says. I got a Superman pocket watch. No, I'm happy. No way. You, you couldn't possibly be into Superman. No, not, not, not in, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what is this that you have in here about, uh, history being awesome or shitty? Well, I was sitting back and I was watching the YouTube and it's like, I saw less music that you listen to or, or some playlist and I'm like, okay, let's put it on. And a song by Kirsten Hirsch, uh, called your ghost. And I haven't heard that song. God, probably since the last time I played it on YouTube. And it, it's Is Michael it, Stipe from R.E.M. and her just did the song. It was, it was like so somber and so utterly depressing and so 90s. Like we've talked about this before, how like early 90s, so depressing and, you know, slit your wrist and all that. <laughs> it, but it took me back because I remember the first time I heard that song was getting ready for school to meet up with you and your mom in your in that uh the newer version of the Chevy Nova that she had. Mm. And the, immediately the Chevy, the Chevy, the, Chev, <laughs> to, the Toyo Chev. Yeah. The one that wanted to be a Mustang, but just couldn't do it. Uh, well, it was, it was, it was a Chevy Nova uh, yeah. built by Toyota. Exactly. I'm not sure how that works, but whatever. Yeah. It was just a bad, bad idea. But, um, it took me back and I started like remembering, you know, us in school and us in high school and all the fun we had. But then I was going, wait a minute, that was the same time that, you know, I was at my poorest and I was not at the greatest point. And I was like, why do I, why do I look at high school as the time that was the greatest point, one of the greatest points of my life. And I long to go back there. But when I really think about it, if you go back that, it's going to be horrible. 
Um, so th- this, I've, I've always thought of, <laughs> I've always thought of high school as that time period where if I could go back and redo it, I totally would, but then I'd end up making exactly the same stupid mistakes I made the first time. So there's no point because as much as I'd like to say that I would change, I, I'm not sure I would. I'd still, still do yeah. all the stupid shit I did. Um, and being in the chat room, uh, I noticed the theme change on RMP website. And yeah, I changed the theme cause I didn't like the old one. I was getting tired of it cause it's basically just pissed me off. I couldn't figure out the setting that was jacked up on one of the re- latest versions of the theme. So I changed the theme and I don't like this one either, but <laughs> at, at least it's different. It's like, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to change your underwear when you don't need to. That kind of, yeah. Is that like dyeing your hair like red from when it was black just because you like feel saucy that week? I'm sure. Uh, I've never dyed my hair, uh, but I'm I'm sure that that might be the case. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and, and he says the current one needs fixed also. No, you know, you're right. You're right. The, the, whole, the whole theme needs to be changed. And right now, one of my, I'm in a love-hate relationship with WordPress. Um that uh yeah i just i'm just not happy with it overall the the whole site i'm just not really all that happy with it's been it hasn't changed in, in the three years since i designed it and i would really like to change it but it's one of those one of those deals where it, it, i would want to sit down the entire day and fix it and i just don't have that kind of that that kind of day i and i, I miss the old days of just coding html by yourself but that's there's I don't know. It would be so difficult to, to be able to do all the things that I can do with the WordPress without the WordPress. I even thought about jumping over to Joomla, but I'd just have to learn a new system then. That'd piss me off again. I can't even remember how to do half the coding for HTML like we used to. Mm. Um, I, I still remember the code. I just, I just don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bust this out real quick. Challenge accepted. <laughs> And other things in these streets. Yo, that's crazy. This looks like a job for Amos's Ball Ooh, on the oh, Ritual oh, Misery oh. Podcast. I am challenging myself. I want to get Seriously Susan on the podcast. Seri- really? uh, the, seriously Susan is the Twitter handle. Siri, like S I R I S L E Susan, is mm-hmm. the woman that voiced Siri. And uh, I, I've, I've reached out to her once before. I'm going to do it again. I would love to get her on the podcast, if, if, if not for a regular episode, maybe for one of our special episodes. But I think that'd be fantastic to have her on there and just to talk about the whole process. The, you know, because cause Siri was bought, bought by Apple. It wasn't, it wasn't developed yeah. internally. And I would really like to know how that whole process worked out and why she specifically got picked and how much of a pain in the ass was it for her to do all the different sounds that could possibly be done to be combined into the words that Siri speaks. I think it'd be great. I always wonder how many times did she have to say and or the, oh, but I'm, I'm more thinking it's probably closer to just syllables like, uh, uh. sir, uh, well, like, su, 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 you know, like how many ways can you put an S and a U together, man? That'd be, yeah. And has got it in the, in the thing right there. So cruise on over to twitter.com slash seriously Susan. That's S I R I O S O shit. Um, it'll be in the show notes. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I know, I know she does, does interviews for big outlets. I don't know if she'd do one for our tiny little podcast, but I think that'd be fantastic. That'd be amazing if I could, if I could handle that and get that, get her on the show. So there's my own challenge to myself. You know what? I got a challenge for you too. There, there's a cat that I met over at uh, Universal Studios right in the middle of BlizzCon. Like, cause you know how bad BlizzCon sucked this year. And I didn't hear anything we about just it. hit. Oh, God, it was <laughs> to say that half of BlizzCon was at Universal Studios on one of the biggest uh, BlizzCon days yeah. tells you how bad it was. I don't, I don't know that BlizzCon really needs to be a, an annual event though. Like, no, it really doesn't. You go. can do BlizzCon every couple of years and do be fine. Well, that's what they did for a while, and it was amazing, and, and everybody would come out of BlizzCon, and there'd be so much news, and all these YouTube videos, and, and holy shits, and wows, and everything else, and now it's just like, oh yeah, I went, I went to BlizzCon. Like, oh, that's yeah. that's sad. That's not fun. It's not like WonderCon, where WonderCon, they actually curate it, but that's beside the point. There's a person that I met, Zivalicious, Z-I, uh, sorry, Z-H-I-V-A-L-I-C-I-O-U-S. 
She's a streamer. She mostly does Diablo 3, but lately she's been getting into G- GTRP and stuff like that. But when we sat and talked about like the history of Twitch and she's been a been with it for a while. And I think you guys could not only learn a lot from her, but what? dude, she's just awesome. You just got to really. Are you saying we don't understand Twitch? I'm saying you don't know shit. No, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Twitch is actually the last place we wanted to be. We wanted to stay on diamondclub.tv for like the rest of forever. And, I, but once we jumped the, 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 the tracks, we had, we're, we're here and that's what, that's where we're staying. But, Man, yeah. Um, Twitch is a, a whole big ball of what the fuck. Of course, and then as soon as you understand it, they change it all up again. Oh my god, social eating! I don't understand social eating. I like, I just, I just don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I, I don't like to see people eating at my dinner table. I don't want to tune in to some person eating online and trying to talk about the food that they're eating because they inevitably, inevitably start talking with their damn mouthful. And it's just like, really? Re- yeah. I, I don't, I don't need to see the mastication of the, of the meal. Uh, it, no. Didn't, didn't we used to get smacked around for doing that? Um, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that's how it works, but now they get celebrated and, and they get uh cheers for it. So <laughs> What, you know, but whatever, I'm, I, I'm not here to, I'm not here to, to stream shame people like you, you, you do you. Right. But, uh, yeah. So, all right, man, next order of business. Snubby J with, from PVC pipe to Rimba tubes. This is one I, I happened to mention it to you on a phone call. And you said you'd already seen it, so I made sure to watch it. Um, this is the dude that does the little the songs on the tubes, and in this talk, he actually goes through the process of how he fell in love with Blue Man Group, and how it like combined all the things he's interested in, and how he tried out for it three times, and finally on the third time, he got a callback, went back to it, and the callback ended up being a no, and they were, he was like, "Okay, I guess I'll try next year," and they were just like, "Yeah, it's okay." And he was like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't need that. I can just be my own blue man uh, self. Yeah. And it's really worked out. I mean, watching him, I've been watching some of his videos and watching him go through the process of building it. I mean, he built it all himself, not mm-hmm. just once, not twice, but I think he's working on his third set of pipes right now. And, and, these, um, and, and he, he was talking in this, in this thing where a matter of half a millimeter can change the t- the tune of the pipe. So yeah. to be precise, they, they were shaving. He, he and his dad built the first one together and he would shave down, you know, sand down just a little bit of the pipe to get that, that note. And man, like this, it's a, it's, it's I, I thought it was interesting. It, I, this isn't one that you learn from. This is one that, where somebody provides you an example of what they did and either you enjoy their story or you don't. I enjoyed it. Not just that, but you, it, it's, it really inspires you. I mean, it really inspired me to say, okay, what can I do next? Here's this kid that just says, you know what? I really want to do this so much that I'm going to do it myself. Mm. And then watching him take it over where he did that video with that, that Daft, Daft Punk uh, cover where he basically mm. remixed Daft Punk. And then the performances he does over at his school or did at his school where he just basically just remixed every song together that you could think think of i mean at one point you had wizard of oz uh somewhere over the rainbow i think was one of the songs and he mixed that up with the uh, william tell overture and mix it's like he's everywhere and yeah in, in one video some, one video he's in there and he, he he transposes himself so he records it five times in each of five different situations and then combines them all into a single track and it was like he's actually put a lot of effort and a lot of work into this passion project that he has and he doesn't say what he's actually doing now, like for a living, but you know, he's still playing the tubes. Right. And so. he, he's got to be having fun. I'm sure he's like doing a little bit of touring. He may not make a ton of money at it, but he's living a, a worthwhile life. Just enjoying what he's doing. Oh yeah. And you just got to applaud that. Yep. Um, so next up we have another video from our friends over at, so, so before, cause they have a drink has, is giving us another video and they're, they're awesome. 
these guys and gal, uh, first of all, if you're, if you're not on, uh, the, the, had a drink show, um, Twitch channel, go ahead and go over there, subscribe and catch them live. It, they, they are a lot of fun. If you're like beer, uh, follow Kent on untapped or whatever, and follow these guys. They're, this podcast is amazing. They, they go through and, uh, it, man, it's just, it's just really awesome. And we're so proud to have them as regular contributors now, because this is the third one. I, I feel good calling them a regular contributor to the Ritual Misery podcast. Yeah. Um, and they, they do a podcast every week. Every other week is a video version. And, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's go talk to Bob for a second here. Or, or not. What the hell? <laughs> there we go. Oh, hey, Ritual Misery. This is Justin from Have a Drink. Uh, and, or Bob, if you're drunk. And I'm here to do a uh, beer review for an upcoming episode. Now, I figure we really need a pander to Kent, so we decided to do a Trappist beer episode. Or episodes, depends on how long I ramble. Uh, so I am drinking some Rochefort 10, or Rochefort 10. I don't know. I don't speak other languages, uh, but it is described <laughs> as a deep, dark, potent, warming, cosmic meltdown of a forcefully contemplative brew, begging to be the last of the evening. The reason it's begging that is because it's a quad, uh, which means it's around 11% ABV. Uh, more of a beer to be savored in all of its boozy glory, uh, unless you really want to get riggedy wrecked. That said, this beer is malty and absolutely delicious. Uh, it's got a very definite boozy finish, uh, so some of you might not like that. But if being a monk means I get more of this, then uh, I'm considering a conversion. Uh, so if you want to <laughs> hear more about this beer or... Uh, any of its other Trappist brothers, uh, you can uh, stop by twitch.tv slash have a drink show uh, and watch us live Saturdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Or you can catch us on your podcatcher of choice. Now, if you'll excuse me, we've got some day drinking to do. Oh, yeah. Um, I love those guys. Oh, and and, and not, not to mention that uh, Trappist is, those are some of my favorite beers ever. And yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, I'm je- I'm jealous because that's when I've never gotten a taste of my life, and I'll probably mm-hmm. now never will. And oh, yeah, uh, actually, oh. I have I have some of that beer in my beer fridge right now. Just fuck putting you. that out there. Just, 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 just I'm going to speak for a chat and say fuck you. <laughs> just, just, just fuck off, fucko. One of the good things about being in the frontier. Uh, the last frontier is that everyone here drinks. So there's got to be a, a ample <laughs> supply of d- different beers from around the world. Otherwise, people just get restless and get angry. Um, yeah. So the, again, if you if you uh, if you if you haven't caught on yet, go over by Have a Drink Show and check them out because they are amazing. Yeah, and they they actually make, really make me laugh. I mean, their humor along with their with their reviews are just great. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, always something to learn over there. They, 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 oh man, there's so much knowledge and so many opinions and they have such a good time. It's, it's great. So, um, is there i I'm, I'm looking at the show doc and I think we've pretty much hit everything. Yeah. Surprisingly, normally it takes us two years to get through the thing. <laughs> You're not lying. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you, uh, if you enjoyed it, me and Sean having, having chit chats, let us know. Uh, Sean is looking for ideas uh, for uh, uh, re, uh, playlists, playlist ideas. He is uh, he he considers himself a bit of a music guy, and he likes to put in, smashing some playlists in there. And if you have a playlist that you would like him to try to satiate, or you have some ideas for songs to be put in a playlist, you can hit him up over at at I am Squidicus on Twitter. He finally finally established a Twitter profile. So at I am Squidicus and uh, oh. let let them know all the things that uh, all the songs that should be in all the playlists. And uh, it, no matter how ridiculous it is, I'm, I'm sure he can find <laughs> something to, to match it up. Yeah, dude, that's it. It's been, it's been scary. Now that I got one of those, that, that their Twitter, that their Twitter thing, thing, jig. Dude, like I'll get off of work and I'll just like kind of casually scroll through and I just keep going like an hour later, still thumbing through. I'm like, Jesus Christ, how many times do these people? I'm only like following like what you and maybe a couple others, like maybe 10 people at max. Oh, yeah. If you're following me on a Twitter storm day like this, if, if sometimes I just wake up and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to share every thought I have today, every legal 
every thought that I can legally share, I'm going to share. There's been a couple of times where I'm just like, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's Twitter. Uh, speaking of my Twitter, <laughs> you can find that Twitter over at Ethan Kane, and uh, you can find the show at Ritual Misery. You can submit ideas to our subreddit, uh, ritual misery, ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can even comment on the episodes we have. Everything that we have is being posted up there. And uh, you can find Kent. Don't don't forget Kent. Just because he's not here tonight doesn't mean just because he's out getting drunk on a on a business trip somewhere doesn't mean that he doesn't need the love. You where, can find him at rm underscore del noche. Where is that somewhere? Because because I believe he's in Vegas, but I'm not certain. So well, that's what he's been tweeting all week. From what I can read on all these tweets, is who? Why aren't you in Vegas with me? Uh, yeah. Well, because <laughs> reasons. We got um yeah. <laughs> So while he's enjoying himself, you know, yeah, you know, I, I give him a big fuck you. <laughs> exactly. Um, and uh, of course, you can find everything that I just mentioned on our website, ritualmisery.com. It's a shit show right now. So go over there and enjoy that. Uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Oh, it is coming up. Okay, good. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening or watching. Uh, for me, for Sean, for the absent Kent, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>